Well, hello and good morning. Uh, welcome to uh, Dr. Childress answers your questions here on uh, Sunday morning coffee with Dr. Childress. Now, today I, I'm going to be answering a question, um, broad question. Um, Dr. Childress, what do I do? Um, so for parents in the family courts, uh, you know, where do you start? Where do you go uh, on this type of situation? And the simple answer is you need to get out of the, the court system and get over to treatment and get the problem fixed. Um, you have a problem, a pathology. They mean the same thing. So you have a problem. You need to get your problem fixed. Fix it and treatment mean the same thing. So you have a pathology. You need to get it treated. You have a problem. You need to get it fixed. Now to get it fixed, you're going to need a treatment plan to fix it. Um, and that comes from mental health people. That comes from doctors. Uh, judges don't develop treatment plans to fix pathology. Um, and so you need to get it over to the doctors to get a treatment plan to fix whatever your problem is. Now, I have some ideas about what that might be. You have some ideas about what that might be. But it doesn't really matter. We need the mental health person to accurately diagnose what the problem actually is and to fix the problem, whatever it is. And, um, and that's from doctors. It's not from judges. So you need to get this out of the court system. Um, it, now, the court's going to be involved a little bit because... Um, you know, this the pathological parent's going to drive this into the courts. Uh, they want to make this about custody and put you on trial and make it really hard to see your child. And if it's financial abuse and it's really takes a long time in the family courts for everything. And so they're manipulating the court system because they like to fight and fight and everything. And it's it's that's a symptom of the pathology that the pathological parent is driving this pathology into the wrong system for solution. It's this legal system does not solve pathology. It solves legal issues, laws, statutes, criminal behavior. Um, this pathology is over with the doctors and treatments. So you need to get this back onto um, a treatment line. So there's your answer to the question. Um, but more broadly, um, thinking about the question, Dr. Childress, what do I do? There's um, some relevant information. The initial relevant information um, is how many children do you have? What are their ages and genders? Um, that will give me information about the developmental stage of the children and the family relationships. Um, and then the second piece of valuable information is what phase of the process are you in? Um, and that will also give me developmental information. You put the two together and, and I can kind of figure out um, broadly where you are in the pattern structures and then what the solution is from that particular pattern place. Now, in terms of the phases of the pathology, there's three primary phases uh, that this pathology moves through. In the first, the early phase is um, when the divorce is still in process or relatively recent. And here we'll see the early signs of the attachment pathology. Um, and there's little to no mental health involvement. So you were expecting a divorce and all of a sudden things start to go haywire and you're in a custody dispute and you got the child showing symptoms of it or beginning to show symptoms of attachment pathology. What do you do in that situation? The second phase um, is the middle phase. Um, and that's when you parents have been in the family courts for a couple of years now. Um, they may have gotten a custody evaluation or there's mental health involvement, reunification therapy. There's no such thing that's been failed. And so there might be some uh, proto mental health involvement, semi mental health involvement, but it's not effectively resolving anything. And then the courts are churning on about custody and the custody schedules. Um, and so that's going to present a different set of issues for resolution. And then there's the end phase of the pathology when the children have aged out and they're now adult children. And what do you do to restore bond with them? Um, and so those are three different phases. Now, today in this particular um, answering of your questions, I'm only going to 
talk about the first two phases. I'm going to reserve the end phase discussion for a separate question. What do I do about the now adult children? How do I recover with them? So we'll we'll address that um, in the future. The early phase, what we need from you, or what you need to do is provide leadership for the family. Um, there's two possible transitions in divorce. And uh, let me say the the divorce is not traumatic. It's not an awful thing. It, it's 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 a kind of unfortunate. It happens. It's it's we wish it didn't happen, but it's common. And families make the transition from an intact family structure that was before, where you know the, it's united by the marriage, and the child. You can kind of see that you can kind of float in this intact family structure to a new separated family structure where the parents are living apart, but it's now the family is now united by the child and the child's shared bonds of affection with both parents. And so it's just a, a, a transition of the family structure and families undergo this and successfully transition all the time. But your family is not making that transition successfully. And instead it's going for that pathological cutoff family structure. And that's where if if the parents have separated, but there's too much conflict and pressure in the parents, they're going to rip the child apart. And the child's going to have to choose sides. And that's your cutoff family structure there, where there's too much conflict and sides develop in the family. That's pathological. That's not healthy. We need to get it back up to the healthy. And, and I think of the child in this separated family structure, kind of like an electron in one of those, you know, bonds between atoms so that the, the child is going between two homes and two parents and is uniting the family at that point. So we have to help the child out and bring down the conflict and, and move so that it's, it's not ripping the child apart. So that's uh, the, we need a parent to lead this family from the intact family structure to the now successful, healthy family structure. And that's going to be you because the other parent uh, is collapsing and they can't do that. They're going to lead it into the pathological family. So we're going to need a leader. The first thing um, to orient to uh, as a, a parent entering this pathology is to control the language, to control the narrative. Um, it's going to be a battle of narratives going forward. Um, the pathological parent is going to create a narrative that you're somehow the abusive parent, the child's being victimized by you, and that they're the protective parent. That's um, the false trauma reenactment narrative. You, on the other hand, have to construct the alternative narrative that they are psychologically controlling the child and they're manipulating the child and creating this false or factitious attachment pathology. Uh, in the child for secondary gain to them. And so the, you're going to have competing narratives. Um, do not use the word or the term parental alienation. That is just going to drive you into bad stuff. There's no such thing. You're going to have to prove the pathology to a judge. There's no diagnostic criteria for it. No clinical psychologists know about it because it doesn't exist. Anything that only exists in the family courts is probably not a real thing in clinical psychology. So parental alienation only exists in the family courts. It's not a real pathology. Um, you know, forensic psychology only exists in the family courts. They're not like real psychologists. Um, so all the stuff that, that's in the family courts um, is unique to itself. We need to get this back out to clinical psychology. So start using proper professional terminology. When you do that, when you use proper terminology, it forces the mental health people to also use that same terminology and it elevates everybody's standard of practice. Using the term parental alienation is just going to result in your destruction. Parents have tried that for 40 years in the family courts. Ask them how it went. 40 years of destruction. Um, the term parental alienation is bait by, and created by the pathology to bait you into trying to do that because that's going to drive you into the court system. You need to get out of the court system, get over to um, the mental health, healthcare system, and get an, 
a, a treatment plan that that has an accurate diagnosis. Now, the the other terms you can use is a variety of them. Um, you pick one. Cross generational coalition. That's nice. That comes out of family systems therapy. Um, psychological control, Barber, that's an excellent one to use because it has a wealth of research under it. And there's a quotes up on my, my uh, consulting website. You can grab those. Psychological child abuse, that's what it is. Um, and that's the diagnosis. And that's the diagnosis we're going to need to guide the treatment. So start using the actual terminology. And if you use parental alienation, there's no link to child abuse. The, those two don't connect. If you use persecutory delusion or factitious attachment pathology, Dr. Childress and my work, if you rely on established knowledge, then there is a direct link to the child psychological abuse. Producing a shared or induced persecutory thought disorder, a psychotic disorder in a child to, um, and a false factitious attachment pathology, factitious disorder imposed on another, both or either of those will land on the child psychological abuse diagnosis. So use real terminology. The second feature um, as you enter this pathology is don't trigger into your fears. Um, this pathology um, is going to get you to, is going to trigger all your anxieties and insecurities. Am I a good enough parent? Did I do something wrong? And I, No, you did nothing wrong. Uh, it's not your fault. Bad people are doing bad things and we're going to make them stop. So don't get triggered into your fears and anxieties because that's going to shut down some important thinking functions, particularly planning ahead. Um, this pathology is very now reactive. It's going to create a lot of crisis of the day kind of stuff. And you're going to be running from crisis to crisis. Go we're going to need to get out ahead of it and get some planning ahead so that when it arrives at a certain point, you're already there with your plan in place and, and we can get ahead of the pathology rather than constantly trying to react to it. Um, so it's going to try to destabilize you and, and provoke you into your anxiety in every way possible, challenging reality, challenging your role as a parent, putting you on the defensive, um, putting you into these legal system that's foreign and, and you can't work and that binds you up all these efforts to to make you anxious um don't don't trigger into your fears so first thing i'd recommend is just smile and relax no worries do that often do that a lot smile in your car smile a lot keep that 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 relaxed uh brain chemical in your brain a lot um to not trigger into your anxiety the other is to develop a plan um, but as I said, the pathogen is very now reactive. It has no foresight or planning ahead ability. So that's its vulnerability. So use the planning ahead. You need a treatment plan. Hold on to that and, and use that planning ability uh, where it's vulnerable. And then uh, the pathogen is pattern. So uh, predict it and prepare for it. We know what it's going to do. It's going to fight about anything. So because it's going to fight about anything and everything, if, if you position yourself that you want a treatment plan, it's going to fight against that. What it wants to do is put it into the court system where they fight about everything and it wants to make it about custody and then have you fighting about custody and who possesses a child. And you're fighting on its turf then. Move it over to the healthcare system, move it over to treatment, make this about fixing the pathology. And then they're going to fight against treatment and that will expose them. So that's where you can kind of control the language, control um, the narrative going forward and, and move it into the healthcare system rather than the, the legal system. Um, and then um, that's the third piece here, which is it's about treatment, not custody. Um, so it's going to try to move it into the court. Don't let it do that. Move it into the treatment as quickly as possible. Um, you know, the, these three words mean exactly the same thing. Uh, diagnosis means identify. Pathology means problem. Treatment means fix it. So you can use all those interchangeably. Um, and so for this pathology, you want a treatment plan to fix the problem. I don't care what the problem is. You want a treatment plan to fix it. Stop fighting about it. Let's get, get a treatment plan. And treatment requires a diagnosis. 
the treatment for cancer is different than the treatment for diabetes. Now, if you ask for an assessment, you get, may get an assessment without a diagnosis. If you ask for that diagnosis, you may get it that, but without a treatment plan. If you ask for a treatment plan, if that's your goal, then you will get all three because treatment needs a diagnosis, cancer or diabetes, and that's going to need a proper assessment. So just hang on to, to a treatment plan. You want a treatment plan to fix that. And don't let go and don't what people jostle you about. Just hold on to that. So you need a plan. Your first plan I would recommend is get a treatment plan. So your first plan is to get a treatment plan. A written treatment plan, as long as you're getting one, might as well make it written, show it to the court and everybody. You're going to have trouble finding mental health people that can do that in the family courts. That's called a barrier to treatment. We'll talk about how to resolve that at the end here. Um, but just you want to be on the proper path of that. And it's not in the family courts. You want to get out of the family courts um, as much as possible. So, and this is important. Do not get a forensic custody evaluation. Um, they are worthless. They solve nothing. They're expensive. They're time consuming. They are awful. Um, so they need to go disappear from the family courts. They are clogging up the system, they are disabling the mental health response to the pathology. We need to get forensic psychology out of the way so that clinical psychology can return and solve the pathology. So what you want is a clinical diagnostic assessment. It's about four to six weeks, uh, twenty-five dollars to $5,000 likely with 5,000 probably would be with a second opinion. Um, and again, but again, you're not, you're going to have trouble finding people who can do that. We'll talk about that at the end. It's, those are all called barriers to treatment. Um, any difficulties that you have on getting the solution. Um, let's see. So the middle phase, uh, parents, the two important issues, if you're in the middle phase, is getting out of the court. So the early phase, don't go into the court. Um, as soon as you, it's, you're going to have to be a little bit because they're going to make this about custody. But as soon as it moves into the, into the court, you need to get it back out to mental health. And it's not about custody. It's about treatment. Custody is easy. It's 50, 50 or every other weekend. There's some basic variant of those two. It's that's a symptom. It's not about custody. It's about treatment. It's about pathology. So say, judge, you're, wait a minute, before we decide on custody, let's let's get a treatment plan. Let's find out what the pathology is or what the problem is first. And then we'll be able to make decisions about what the custody schedules are. So don't don't go to remedy. Don't go to treatment before you get the diagnosis, before you know whether it's cancer or diabetes. Just don't try to solve stuff. Um, you know, first get the diagnosis, then you will know how to solve it. So get out of the family courts. The second is getting escaping forensic psychology because they own you. You need to get out to the real knowledge that's out there. And those are all the barriers to treatment is how do you get competent mental health services? And it's not out of the forensic psychologist. So then how do we get you free from them and over to professional competence? So um, in the middle phase, you're trapped in the courts. So your goal is to transition to treatment. You want a treatment plan to fix the child's attachment pathology, whatever it's caused, you want to fix it. Diagnosis guides treatment. And you want to move step by step from the legal system and the arguments about custody um, over into treatment, uh, you know, um, and don't move into treatment until you get that diagnosis and one that's accurate. Um, and then we'll talk about getting scaffolding support for your mental health people. Now, for the early folks, don't let the pathology move it into the court system. For the middle zone folks, you might have some problematic mental health involvement. That's where maybe I can be a little bit of a help or my material or stuff. Um, but we got to, we got to, that's a course correction, getting you out of the courts um, at that point. A little bit more challenging and difficult and you're financially you're going to be a lot more strapped because the courts have been draining your money attorneys have been draining your money which is part of the financial spousal abuse of you um so um then the other feature is you want to escape the forensic psychologists uh so you want to for the targeted parent dads 
uh, I recommend that's a borderline mom variant. I recognize, re uh, recommend dialectic behavior therapy, but that's going to need to be adapted to the court. But as you look for clinical psychology people uh, in your community, for the dads, I would look to the dialectic behavior therapist. Moms can do that as well. But for the targeted moms, um, that's the narcissistic father variant. Um, most likely. And I would look, or recommend you look in the intimate partner violence therapist, IPV, that's classically called domestic violence. Um, so you want to, because both of those deal with personality pathology, uh, the DBT therapists and the IPV therapists, um, and they deal with the, the type, the gender related type that you're kind of looking at, um, borderline personality or the narcissistic um, spousal abuse kind of pathology. And this is at its core, a spousal abuse pathology. So dads, you can go to the spousal abuse therapist as well. Um, it's just our culture doesn't quite recognize spousal abuse, emotional abuse of men. Um, but that's what it is. It's spousal abuse using the child as a weapon, um, psychological and emotional spousal abuse. So that needs uh, to be addressed as well. The, um, the other thing as I close off here is getting some resources and to be aware of resources. Um, so um, relative to what do you do, um, the Conscious Co-Parenting Institute, Dorsey Pruder, CEO, she's a family coach and businesswoman. Um, and her business, or CCPI, uh, Conscious Co-Parenting Institute, has a variety of resources available from for parents and all of them are excellent. I, I'm a familiar with them all. I have no association with Ms. Pruder. I'm not part of her business or do anything with her. I am a consultant in the family courts and it's my job to know who else is in the family courts and what sort of resources are here. And Ms. Pruder is um, a valuable resource and she's a successful resource and all of her uh, th stuff is, is successful. So she's a resource to you. Um, she's the most experienced professional in the family courts regarding the recovery of children from psychological child abuse by a pathological parent. And I recommend that you become an informed consumer and uh, become aware of your resources. Uh, so that's, you can work things out with her as you, you move around her. One of the ways I recommend people uh, kind of enter her world is by Googling her on YouTube and watching anything she has up on YouTube. Um, and Dorsey may want to put something up on YouTube after this, uh, specifically for the referral in. Um, but I, I would um, become familiar with her approach and her thinking. She also has a Facebook group, The Alliance to Solve Parental Alienation. I suggest you get over there and just listen into what she talks about, what she's doing. And then when you're comfortable, reach out to her. Um, for school age children, the early intervention, the early entry folks, uh, her higher purpose parenting class, I recommend um, her other resources are de sort of dependent upon what phase you're in. Um, but she's uh, very experienced in helping extract or trying to help families extract from the family courts and get to treatment. Um, and then the second um, resource that's available um, is me. So I um, am available to provide scaffolding support to the mental health people that are around you. So that's a bit of my role. So I have three areas of my consulting website, um, attorneys. So you can go and there's wonderful resources there. Look at them, get them over to your attorney if you're trying to get out of the family court. So we need to do something. There's resources there for, for that legal side of things. Then the middle section there is mental health um, professionals. There I... Patients should never have to explain the pathology to the doctor, but unfortunately you guys do, which indicates how bad things are over here. The mental health section is my effort for a doctor to explain the pathology to a doctor. So you can refer any mental health people you come into contact with to that area of my website. And then I also hold public consults. They can get on, they can consult with me. So I'm available to um, consult with the mental health people as a scaffolding support to them. And then I've got resources as well over on the parents section, such like these videos, I'm putting them up um, sections on, uh, on my parent resource page. So um, with that, though, that would be my introduction to the, um, answering the question, Dr. Childress, what do I do? 
Um, you want to get out of the family courts as much as possible. You want to shift this over to treatment. You want to get out of forensic psychology entirely and get this over to clinical psychology and get a diagnosis, an accurate diagnosis. And the accurate diagnosis is child psychological abuse. Um, and until we get that accurate diagnosis, I can guarantee you um, that no treatment of mine for child abuse will be effective as long as I'm sending the child home to, be, to the abusive parent. And so we need that child abuse diagnosis to guide treatment. Is it cancer or diabetes? It's cancer. And so if we wind up treating cancer with insulin, the patient's going to die. We need, we need the treatment for cancer. We need the treatment for child abuse, which requires the mental health people to stand up and make an accurate diagnosis. And that's maybe a little bit where I'm, my role is to help improve the quality of mental health services that are being received by parents and their children and that are being um, delivered to the court or provided to the court. So with that, um, I'm going to head off to my day and um, be back at other times and answering whatever questions you have. And I have an email address or my Facebook page. Uh, if you have questions for me, just toss me a question. And ultimately, I will. my goal is to ans answer all your questions until you have no more questions. So with that, take care, everybody.